scary. And Just without the witches, <laughs> right? I take it she didn't have witches in her vision um, of Thanksgiving. There were, there were no witches, but she did mm. have serious concerns about certain influences in her era. One of her concerns was a growing population of Roman Catholic immigrants from Europe. And she felt like you could incorporate immigrants mm. into the celebration of Thanksgiving and really teach them what it meant to be an American. And for her, what it meant to be an American was to be a Protestant Christian. And there are stories in Godey's that tell the tale of Catholics who hadn't celebrated Thanksgiving before, but you know, they get visited by a distant relative who comes out to the country and teaches them how to do Thanksgiving, and they think, oh, this is such a wonderful thing. I'm going to convert um, to Protestantism. I, I, I'm at least going to convert to Thanksgiving, and then, <laughs> you know, it leaves open the possibility that, well, you know, they're on their way. They're, kind of a they're on their way house. to. Yes, yeah. exactly. So was she worried about sort of not only Catholics, but urban growth and industrialization oh, yeah. and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So this yeah. is very the, much a backward looking, I mean, very intentionally yeah. invented to be nostalgic. Yeah. So she wants people to go out into the country. And that was one of her prescriptions for Thanksgiving is that you go home. And in a moment where increasingly people were living away from their birthplace. So she wanted this us to go an, over the river and through the woods. She did. She yeah. did. She really wanted people to experience the rural purity and natural beauty and blessing of the country. So you would have, you know, a roasted bird or you would have a chicken pie or you would have gourds and squash and things that to her represented harvest bounty, and you would have a lot of it. And so she's in many ways ahead of her time, the sort of the localist uh, strategies of, of our own time, right? Kind of, <laughs> except that she wanted everybody to be a New England localist. She wanted everybody oh, yeah. everywhere um, <laughs> to pretend like they were enjoying a Thanksgiving harvest feast in New England. Did she have a regional component to this, that she wanted this to be adopted by the South, where she, mm -hmm. I'm sure, did not live up to her standards? She wants this holiday to be celebrated everywhere. And it becomes particularly acute mid-century when things are falling apart. Hmm. So there are stories in Godey's and in these successor publications like Ladies Home Journal at the end of the 19th century. There are stories that are focused on the Southern experience of Thanksgiving. And again, it's a lot like the stories of the Catholic experience of Thanksgiving, that hmm. once you try it, you know, you can't have just one Thanksgiving. You're going to want to do it every year. And she saw it as a way of not only, as I said before, integrating women into the national calendar, but integrating Southerners into the national calendar. So, Anne, with all this uh, creation of Thanksgiving in the early 19th century, what would the pilgrims actually think of that holiday if they had been able to drop in on Sarah Hale's house? Oh, well, I think they would have been overwhelmed with the bounty, and um, I guess the word fussiness is in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, in her instructions to her readers in the magazine, there's a lot of detail about how to decorate and, you know, timetables for preparation, but probably the strangest thing would be be that they would have seen this as a kind of presumptive act to have a day mm -hmm. once a year where you were thankful. As, as good Calvinists, they didn't want to appear presumptuous about God's mercy. And so, you know, they kind of took everything day by day. And if there seemed to be an occasion for Thanksgiving, they would declare a day of Thanksgiving. And if there seemed to be a day when they needed to take stock— they would declare a day of fasting and repentance. Um, and their hmm. anthropology was such and their theology was such that, you know, God did whatever God did out of just grace and mercy. God didn't do anything on behalf of humans because humans deserved it. Right. Humans really didn't deserve much of anything. So, so thanking um, God was really a pretty pretentious thing to do. 
because he wasn't doing he, it for you anyway, right? Well, I don't think they would have begrudged her gratitude. They would have said, yes, exactly, you should be grateful, but you should also be attuned to the fact that um, God not only cares for you and lifts you up for God's own purposes, but God can punish you and chasten you again for God's own purposes. And mm -hmm. so just to focus on the Thanksgiving part without having maybe another day that was to be the national day of, of penitence would have struck them as funny. Not in a ha-ha way, but in an odd and probably sinful way. Maybe in blasphemous. Yes. So you're willing to go that far? Willing to say yes. that the pilgrims had... Blasphemous. Oh, that's a pretty radical statement. <laughs> Just the kind that we like to have here on Back to Us. So I'm very grateful for you joining us here today. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. That was Anne Blue Wills, who's an assistant professor of religion at Davidson College. And we'll link to her article on Thanksgiving on BackstoryRadio.org.